If you spend any time on the side of YouTube that provides tips and advice about self-development and entrepreneurship, then you'll be no stranger to the idea of optimizing your productivity. It's everywhere, the constant nagging feeling that you are not doing enough. But I'm trying so hard. No matter where you look, we are bombarded with ways to squeeze more working hours into our day, get more done with less time, and increase our economic output, gosh darn it. It's not just YouTube. Our culture is saturated with the idea that being more productive equals being a more valuable and worthwhile member of society. But is this actually good for us? In an age of constant connectivity and frequent burnout, is thinking this much about our productivity really helping us in our businesses, our careers, our lives in general? Or is it just eroding our mental health and self-worth, especially as we enter the ninth consecutive week of lockdown in our 500 square foot cinder block boxes staring at the wall as we try to write yet another email? Or is that just me? In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about why I decided to stop trying to be productive and why I think you should too. For the past three years since I graduated from university, I have been singularly focused on one goal, and that is growing my YouTube channel and therefore my business, which has grown from kind of a part-time freelance thing while I was a student to a full-blown agency with eight super talented team members. During that time, you could say I got a little bit caught up in work. Are you ready for dinner? Sorry, I just gotta finish working. Can we turn off the lights? Sorry, just gotta finish working. Are you done in there? Sorry, just gotta finish working. This work obsession was just sort of an accepted part of life for me. I didn't really question it or think that it was weird and unusual until I kind of hit a wall and I just couldn't do it anymore. When the pandemic started, as much as I totally recognized the seriousness of it and acted accordingly by staying home and pretty much never leaving the small box that is my condo, it didn't really hit me right away how much it was affecting me personally because I was very fortunate to be able to pivot my business to be completely remote, completely online. And so I could keep working and if anything, my business really took off and started to grow during that time, either because everything was online now and so a lot of folks needed more help with social media and their online presence or just because of the momentum that my youtube channel had built and it continued to grow throughout 2020. either way my career was thriving and so i just kept working more and more in fact with all of my hobbies and social life cancelled i had even more time to just think about work Soon enough though, I started to feel like I never had enough time to get anything done. I was never crossing off all the tasks that I had on my to-do list. And I never felt like I was moving my business forward fast enough. And I think the worst part of this was I stopped having external things in my life to measure my self-worth by. I was no longer a fun Sunday school teacher to the cute preschoolers at my church or an athletic up and coming jammer on my rec roller derby team. All of those things just disappeared from my life and all of a sudden, all that I was, was an entrepreneur, a worker, somebody who was measured by my economic output, not by anything else in my life because nothing else in my life existed anymore. And so I became more and more obsessed with my productivity and my productivity became more and more the only thing that I was measuring my self-worth by. You might have similar feelings even if you don't run your own business. Since working at home has become the norm, I know so many nine to fivers have been finding it difficult to really create that separation between work and life. You might feel pressure to be constantly responsive and always available to emails and Slack messages, even outside of work hours. Or maybe if you do shift work and you do have really clear separation between your work day and your personal time, you still might be feeling pressure to make that personal time productive by learning a new skill or starting a side hustle rather than just like chilling and enjoying that time. No matter our situation with work, I feel like all of us feel this intense pressure to do more, be more, achieve more all of the time. At least I know I did. And so after more emotional breakdowns than I'd like to admit, I realized that I just couldn't keep going. I had to divest from my productivity being a primary part of my self-worth and try instead to focus on other things. But what would those other things be? Recently, I've been really enjoying this book by Dr. Kimberly Nicholas called Under the Sky We Make, How to Be Human in a Warming World. Its primary topic is how we all need to change our lifestyles in order to, you know, avoid impending climate collapse just some light reading but i actually learned a lot more from it just about 
being a happy person than I thought I would. As I was reading the book and kind of mourning the loss of the life that I thought that I would have for myself, the life that was sold to me throughout my late teens and early 20s that would include lots of frequent flights, buying cheap disposable clothes and lots of new technology, things that you know I could do but I just find myself now not able to continue you know in good conscience it brought up lots of thoughts for me about what it really means to live a good life outside of all of those things and I realized that living a good life doesn't have to be about doing a lot of different things ie productivity but rather about finding the joy in the things that we are doing. Dr. Nicholas frames this as the exploitation mindset versus the regenerative mindset and argues that we need to shift away from our exploitation mindset, the mindset that sees the earth as a factory that can produce ever more products for us to consume. And I would argue this is pretty similar to how we see people in the world of online hustle culture, just as factories to produce more output. And that we instead need to switch to a regenerative mindset where we focus on the long-term well-being of the planet and in my example people workers professor nicholas writes putting the regeneration mindset into practice means placing value respect rights and empathy for all living beings at the center of our priorities recognizing that life is an end unto itself and not a means to an end and deriving meaning from reciprocal relationships of love and care rather than transactional exchanges regeneration means seeing the earth as not just the wellspring of resources, but a living entity with whom we have a relationship. Even though Dr. Nicholas wrote her book about our climate mindset, I feel like the same framework can be applied to how we view our work and our productivity. Right now we exist in a capitalist society that prioritizes the output of workers, aka people, more than anything else. Ironically, while many entrepreneurs like myself may start their own business in order to escape that kind of pressure, often, and at least in my case, we end up just replicating those exact same pressures onto ourselves. Or potentially even worse or higher pressures, like I feel like is probably the case for me. In general, I feel like the notion of human optimization is the exploitation mindset at its finest. We treat people as if we are machines, from tech CEOs only drinking Soylent so that they can reduce the amount of time they waste on meals, or wellness influencers trying to sell you a diet in order to optimize your weight loss or get in a better workout. These ideas are predicated on the idea that human beings are like machines that need to be continually improved and always optimized in order to get a higher output out of us, whether that output is the work that we do or the appearance that we bring to the world. And if thinking this way about work is all too like hippie and granola for you. Hey, not everybody can stop shaving their legs and drink exclusively out of mason jars like me. Then consider this perspective. Even if the end goal is to optimize the amount of work that we're doing and to be the most efficient with it, focusing so much on productivity as the measure for success is not the best way to do that. An article from Fast Company titled How Being Too Productive is hurting innovation and killing our careers. Author Tony Crabb writes, in our mania to squeeze ever more efficiency out of the workforce, ever more connectedness, ever more output, we have neglected the fact that our brains are not machines and doing more and more, we are thinking less and less, which is curious because in an information age, it's our cognitive abilities that matter, the collective intellect, imagination, and problem solving capability of our people. In other words, the very capability that our businesses need to cultivate is being damaged day by day by more. So whether we want to improve our creativity or the quality of our work, or if we just want to think about our self-worth as separate from the work that we do, focusing less on productivity as a benchmark for success is beneficial. I like to think about productivity less as a goal to achieve and more as a side effect of being really passionate and excited about the work that I'm doing. So that's great, but how can we do that practically? All right, let's have a seat and talk about the three practical steps that I think you can take to start to focus less on productivity and more on just being and being a happy person. Number one, create more reasonable to-do lists that focus on tasks that actually move the needle in your business, career, life, 
rather than just busy work. This is definitely a lesson that's been important for me because I used to create daily to-do lists with like 17 to 20 tasks and always feel guilty about not completing them all. And it was like, of course I couldn't complete them all. That's just crazy. So I recommend focusing on two to three big tasks per day. Just keep it simple, keep it to that list and try to create a list that you think you can actually get done rather than creating these aspirational lists of what you would like to get done. Because it's just gonna lead to frustration and feeling like you're not doing enough when really your list was asking you to do too much. Also, I would recommend approaching this with a sort of attitude of like minimalism and what do I really need to do rather than like, what do I think other people think that I should probably be doing? What I mean by this is I feel like if you've watched enough productivity guru videos, then you probably feel like you need to have like a 10 step morning routine where you journal and work out and make uh, like AeroPress coffee or something like that. And if you really like doing those things and those things bring you joy, then that's awesome. Keep doing them. But if you feel this weird pressure that you should have like an optimized morning routine and therefore should do all these extra things that you don't really care about, just cut it, cut that from the list. You don't have to do it. There's been too many times where I have felt like I need to create this like super fancy morning routine. And it's like, no, I just need to get out of bed, eat a bowl of cereal and brush my teeth and put on makeup and we're good to go. So do what works for you, not what you feel like you should be doing. Number two, if you at all can, make yourself less available. Now I know this isn't accessible to everybody because depending on the type of job that you're in, you may need to be pretty available via email and like Slack and whatever during work hours. But if you can limit the number of meetings you're taking or how often you're checking your email, I think that you'll probably end up feeling a lot more satisfied with the work that you're doing. You'll get interrupted less and hopefully you'll be able to spend longer chunks of continuous time doing the type of work that brings you value. I think a lot of times meetings and lots of emails and constant messages over like Slack or whatever, just sort of make you feel like you're doing stuff or like that's how you feel like you should be behaving in order to be productive. Um, but it's probably just stressing you out more than it actually is getting stuff done. And number three, find hobbies. I feel like hobbies are so underrated. I feel like it's kind of this like cheesy thing that people don't really talk about because we value stuff that earns us money like so much. <laughs> but I really do think hobbies are important for having a balanced life. Think of it this way. If you were like investing your money or if you were building a business with different income streams, you'd want to diversify that income, right? So that it's more stable. You don't, you know, lose everything because you're so invested in I don't know, GameStop or something. And then all of a sudden it crashes, right? So I feel like it's the same thing with life. You want to invest your time and your self-worth in lots of different avenues. So then if you lose your job or your manager's being shitty or something about it is just not vibing with you, you can say, you know what? My job sucks, but I really am great on the roller derby team or choir is really fun for me or I love doing my quilting or you know, whatever. And it gives us a sense of purpose outside of just the way that we earn money in order to feed ourselves to live. Like there's so many more important things. So find yourself a hobby or two that have nothing to do with making money and don't feel pressure to turn them into a side hustle because trust me from experience, if you have a hobby that turns into a business, it completely changes um, your entire approach to it and how you feel about it. So find non-monetizable hobbies. Okay, that's my advice. I really think, and what I've learned over the past year and a half of being sort of a workaholic is that in order to find true work-life balance, we really need to divest our self-worth from our productivity. Our productivity doesn't define us, it's just a part of our lives. To put it simply, we need to work to live, not live to work. Let me know in the comments if you like this video. I know this is definitely a different style of video than what you might have been used to on my channel recently, but this is something that I'm really passionate about and wanted to discuss, and I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on the topic as well. Also, if you wanna check out the book that I mentioned, I've linked the author's website in the description. I really, really highly recommend it. And let me know if there's any other topics you'd wanna see a video like this on in the future. I hope to make more. Okay, as always, 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are having adventures and following your dreams and I will see you in the next video. Bye.